Hello, my friend, and welcome. Last night, I had a dream about creating a video explaining the, the analogy of a very common popular analogy of explaining consciousness, our true nature, our true self, with a projection screen, a movie screen. Now, this is something that Ramana Maharshi has used quite frequently in explaining what consciousness is, giving you the feeling of what consciousness is. And many other people have done this before him, after the movies were created, the projection screen was created. It's, it's, it, it's a fairly common analogy, and you've probably heard it yourself. If not, um, you're in for a treat. <laughs> and if you have, maybe this will help explain it even better. Because in the dream, I realized, you know, that I could use video to help with this explanation, as you'll see. So you're aware, if you've ever been to a movie, that there's a screen, there's a big white screen. And before the movie starts, you can see the screen. And then when the lights dim down and the movie is projected on the screen, you see different images and hear sounds and all these, these things going on, and you lose your attention to the screen. Your attention is no longer on the screen. It's on the, the images. Of course, you paid to go to the movie. You're not going to spend all your time looking at the screen behind the images, even though it's harder to see because of the images projected onto it. You're looking at the images. That's where the action is. That's where the story is. That's where everything that's going on, that's what you pay to see. And so as Ramana and many other people have, have expressed, this is a wonderful analogy for consciousness. Consciousness is the clear white screen. Consciousness is the clear white screen. All the images that appear on it are not consciousness. They're not the screen. They're images reflected onto it, projected onto it. Right. And and the screen is not affected by those images at all, is it? If in the, the movie, a fire breaks out and everything is burning up and people are on fire and buildings are on fire and fire is raging through the forest and there's this huge fire. When the movie's over and the lights come up, you see the screen has is not burnt at all. Nothing has happened to it. You may see a movie where, where there's a flood and, and everything's underwater. Everything's wet. This huge flood. Everything is soaking wet. But when the lights come up and you see the screen, it's not wet. It has not been touched by these images of water, of fire, of anything. Explosions can happen, but the screen is not damaged by the explosions of the images projected on it. It's completely untouched. And this is the same for consciousness, for our true nature, for our awareness. Nothing in this world affects our true nature. It's completely free of everything that happens. This is a wonderful experience to have when you realize and, and experience your true nature that whether this particular body has gone through many traumas in its in its relatively long life or short life compared to consciousness but it's gone through through many pains and traumas and different experiences and emotional experiences and all kinds of things that could be damaging to it but none of this has affected consciousness in any way and when you experience this you realize that nothing in the future ever will because if if nothing if if this body has been affected by a lot of trauma and it has many people's bodies have been then if that isn't affecting consciousness at all in any way in the slightest way not even the tiniest bit no effect 
then nothing in the future will affect it. Not death, nothing. Consciousness remains pure as it is always, just like that movie screen. None of those projected images can affect that movie screen, and nothing that happens to this body, in this life, to this world, can affect consciousness, our true nature. It's always free and undisturbed and unchanging. It remains always as it is. Now, right now, you're looking at, you could call this a projected image, this body. You're hearing the sound of this voice. You're seeing with your eyes this body. And behind this is consciousness, is this screen of consciousness in you. Your awareness of this body your awareness of the sound of this voice. And when attention moves back to that screen of consciousness that is untouched and unaffected by this body or this voice, it remains always as it is. And this is all my teaching is only pointing to this one thing, your true nature. So if your attention moves back to this, to your true nature, then this image of this person, this body, this form will begin to fade and your attention will focus more on the awareness that's aware of it. The awareness that's aware of this voice, the meaning of these words, the sound of the voice and the meaning of these words will begin to fade as attention goes back to the awareness of it, goes back to that clear, pure movie screen that everything appears on, everything that we see. Right now, you're looking at a, a body, a form, and a particular vehicle that it appears on, a computer screen, a, a, a cell phone, whatever you're looking at, whatever the medium is that you're able to see this body, you're looking at that. And you're looking at the room beyond it, the room that you're sitting in. Or if you're sitting outside the environment that you're, that you're sitting in, you're seeing all of this. But behind all of this is the screen, your awareness, your consciousness. And as attention turns to consciousness itself, to awareness itself, the image begins to fade. Your focus on it begins to soften as your attention turns in and the screen begins to appear, your awareness, your consciousness, your true self begins to appear, arise as you, your being itself becomes more important than what you're seeing, what you're hearing, what you're thinking. Because all these things appear on the screen. Your thoughts appear on the screen. Your feelings appear on the screen. Your senses appear on the screen. All of these things are not you. You are the consciousness and awareness of all of it. Now, when you're in a movie theater, the, all the lights dim down so that you can see the images on the screen very clearly and you don't see the screen anymore. But if that same movie, was projected outside during the day in the sunlight, you would still see the screen and the images would be very faint. You wouldn't see them nearly as clearly as you do in a movie theater or in your room with you know, your computer or whatever you're watching or a television set. The images would be much more faint and you would be able to see through the images the screen that they're projected on because of the sunlight, because of the, the brightness of the room and the sunlight. Just as if you were in the movie theater and they kept the lights on full during the time and even shown spotlights on the screen, you wouldn't be able to see the images as clearly. And as your attention turns to consciousness, to your true nature, as it turns in, as you take that backward step, as Adyashanti called it, that backward step into your true nature. 
then the same thing happens with what you see. It softens. It's not as distinct. It's not as sharp. Your interest fades from that as it turns in to the awareness, to the consciousness that's aware of these images, as that becomes more important. And eventually, as a practice of doing this, often enough turning your attention inward to your true nature, to the awareness of things, to, to consciousness itself, not the objects that you're aware of, but consciousness itself, the beingness of consciousness, your true nature, as attention moves to the beingness, the being itself. It leaves the outward projection of images and sounds and, and thoughts and feelings and beliefs and, and all of that. And eventually, you end up in nirvikalpa samadhi, what we call nirvikalpa samadhi, which is when the body, mind, and world appear to disappear. You're, there's so little interest on it, and all interest is placed on the self, on consciousness, on your true nature, on the movie screen. And this is the analogy, a wonderful analogy of the movie screen and consciousness. I hope this resonates with you. And you can do this practice of turning your attention inward. Not to your thoughts. Not to your body's senses. Sight. Touch. Taste. Seeing. Hearing. Not to that. You leave that alone. All your thoughts and beliefs and practices, you leave that alone. And turn your attention in to what's aware of all this. The being itself. You cannot see consciousness the way you can see a movie screen because you, in fact, are the movie screen. You are consciousness. So you cannot hold it outside of yourself to look at it. You can only be it because you are it. But that's the awareness of it. That's what you turn your attention to, the very being of that. And as you do that, the objects of awareness, the objects of consciousness, the things that you perceive fade, and you experience your true self. You realize your true nature as being itself, as consciousness itself. Thank you, my friend. I hope this is useful to you. And I hope you will do this practice, do this gazing practice. There, there will be other videos specifically with this transmission and this gazing practice. This analogy is just a way of describing it so that your mind can understand it. And then you can let that understanding go. Let those thoughts go. You don't need to understand it. You just need to be it. And you already are always this.